The Muppets are back and they dance like this. Ah! It's actually exhausting. The Muppets. Or so it's been years since the Muppets have been on screen. And when I saw a trailer for this movie, I was like, this is awesome, this is hilarious. My one concern, will people even remember or care? And I really hope so, because when you see this movie, you're like, they're still relevant. Or so the story goes in this movie as it is in real life. It's been years since the Muppets have been together, they haven't kept in touch, and now they need to come together for their comeback show. And everyone's like, the who for the what? And I loved how this movie played on that. Because in the movie, they addressed the fact that like, yeah, it's no one cares. And there are things about the Muppets movies like before that they could get away with, but now if you put them in, you're like, uh, does that work? Like, you know, musical numbers, things like that. And I liked how this movie just addressed the fact that, yeah, it's absurd. If you're doing a movie like this, they're like, I don't know that that would work with audiences today. So we're going to do it. And we're going to address the fact that, yeah, it is absurd to do that. So that was awesome. They played to their strengths. And in that, they breached the fourth wall a few times. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much when the characters acknowledge that, yeah, we're in a movie and yeah, there's the audience and I'll talk to the audience sometimes even. You know, like when Fozzie Bear was all like, that was a really big explosion. Surprised we had that in the budget. My only gripe about it is that they do it quite a few times. You know, when you do it a couple times, it's special and it's hilarious. When you end up doing it a lot in a movie, it's still funny, but it ceases to be special at that point. And all the Muppets are in it. All the ones you remember, you got Kermit, Miss Piggy, the great Gonzo, those two old guys that gripe on the balcony, that one dude that looks like a big plush couch. They're all in it. And actually there's a new Muppet, or he's a puppet. I guess the Muppets are like the group. He's an aspiring to be Muppet but he's Jason Siegel's brother, and he's really the one that gets this whole ball rolling for their comeback show. If I had to place the humor in this movie, this humor reminded me of the show Community. It's like, yeah, you really appreciate it if you're into pop culture and you get movie references, things like that, but the Muppets are back, they're still hilarious, they're still relevant, which I am psyched for. I and mean, I was afraid I was gonna go into this movie and just be like, uh, it's just too little too late for this. But in the end, I loved it. It's one of those movies you love the more you think about it. I'll say it this way, this is the best Muppets movie that a Muppets movie could be if it came out now in 2000. 2011 after a lot of people have forgotten about the Muppets. I will not only buy this movie on Blu-ray, this makes me want to go out and just buy all the other Muppets movies on Blu-ray. So who is your favorite Muppet of all of them? Comment below, let me know. Mine, dude, it's gotta be Animal. Okay, out of control. The best, I'm telling you. I do love Gonzo though, he's great. I remember he was like my childhood favorite and as I grew up, I was like, I just like unstable Muppets animal. And I love enlightening you guys to really cool podcasts, and this is a podcast for film fans, which you guys will probably are. I put a link below to a podcast where Schmoes No interviewed the editor-in-chief of Rotten Tomatoes, Matt Atchity. They talk about a lot of film stuff, which I personally like, but they also talk about the prospect of Rotten Tomatoes actually recognizing YouTube movie reviewers as official critics, which I personally love. So check it out, be entertained, my film fans. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. Out of control!